Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about what is a transaction and then the behavior of transactions. So let's take a uh, scenario where we are writing to two files. So let's say this is a file f1 and we have another file, let's say f2. So what I'm going to do here is in f1, I'm going to write if any new employees come and join my company, then I'm going to write their name and then you know their salary and then their all the information in file one and whenever in file one I, I write a new employee and then I'll count how many total number of employees are there and then I'll keep that count in file F2. So let's say I have three employees uh, you know in my system so A, B and C and therefore in uh, A, B, and C, and then there says salary is 100, 200, 300, and then the total number of employees are 3, so therefore the count here is 3. Alright, so let's say this is what I am doing, and then uh, another employee comes, uh, employee number D, and his salary is 400, so I updated, I'm going to update the, so I'm going to update the count to 4. Right. So let's say this is how it is going on. So, so what happens is that let's say there is another employee that came in and his name is E. Okay. So I already updated in the employee name in E in my uh, file F1, and just after that my power shuts down. Okay. So my computer is gone, and what's going to happen is that I just wrote here in file F1. Uh, you know the the fifth employee but I didn't have a chance to update in file F2 the count to 5 so when the machine reboots right so when the machine reboots then what's going to happen is that in file 1 I have 5 employees in file 2 I have count as 4 so therefore this is not a consistent state Okay, so what is a consistent state? So it's not a consistent state. What is a consistent state? So whenever I have whatever number of employees I have here, the count is matched to that number of employees. All right. So this is actually the problem in the file system. However, in database system, we need consistent state. So whenever you know, is if, if if the power's gone and then when the power comes up, I want to have my database in a consistent state and transactions are the features that keeps database in a consistent state okay so this is what is a transaction is a feature and this feature is basically uh, you know a shift change from your file based system to the database system and database system implements transactions and we will learn what is a transaction in the next slide Let's take another scenario, another example. So in this example, let's assume that you have uh, in your in your bank you have two accounts. One account is your checking account. So let's say this is called checking account. And then you have a saving account. So what we are doing is that let's say in your checking account you have 5000 you have 5000 dollar in your checking account and then on your saving account let's say you have 4000 dollar right so what i'm what i'm telling you you are told so so you are told to transfer dollar 1000 from checking to your saving account all right so if you want to do this is the work that you have to do this is a task that you have to do to do this task what are the steps that is involved and those steps are number one first thing is that you read how much in my checking account in my C account okay then the next step that probably you're going to do 
you are going to deduct 1000 from whatever you got in step 1. So whatever you read in step 1, so you deduct 1000 from that. Deduct 1000 from C account. Then the next step that we are going to do, write the deducted, uh, after you deducted whatever the amount, so write that new amount in checking account. Then step 4 is will be read saving account, deduct, sorry addition, add. So add dollar one thousand to saving account and then the last step would be write So write the new amount in the saving account. So these are the six steps that you are going to do in order to achieve this tax of transferring $1,000 from your checking account to your saving account. And essentially what, what is going to happen is that all these steps together this is called a transaction. Okay. So transaction is basically steps to achieve a task. Okay. So transaction consists of multiple steps or it can consist one step. That's not, a, not, a, not an issue. Okay. So multiple steps. So those steps together called a transaction. And let's do couple of observation. So what I, want, what I have observed here is couple of things like the first observation number one. So, so what I say is that let's say I deduct five thousand. So, it, so this become so. Let's see, like, now what is the total amount at at the start? The total amount before I do any of the steps is dollar nine thousand, right? Together checking and saving, and then what I did, I deduct one thousand from here. So therefore, the new amount here became four thousand, and the new amount here become five thousand. So what is the sum again? is dollar nine thousand. Okay. So therefore the sum of checking and saving remains what was before. Alright? And this is called consistency property. Okay. That means before the tasks your database your you know your 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 system is one one state and after you do after you have done the six steps your database is on a similar consistent state all right so so let's say another an, another uh, observation observation number 2 let's say while you are doing the steps 1 2 3 4 5 6 let's say after step number 3 okay so after step number three, something happened. Okay, so after some after step number three, something happened for which you are not able to do step four, five, and six. Right. So that means so this is the considered the case that you have already updated. You know, you have already taken one thousand from, uh, you know, from this uh, from this checking account. So therefore, the checking account amount becomes four thousand, and you have not yet you have not yet updated anything in the saving account you have not yet added in anything in the saving account therefore your saving account amount is still there with 4000 okay what is the initial initial value right so in that case what we should do should we keep that one in this state if we keep that one in the state definitely we are not going to a consistent state so in that case what is going to happen is that we are going to you know whatever steps that we have done one two three we are going to go in the reverse order that means we want to undo all those things whatever we have done you get my point so that means either we do all the six steps or we will not do anything okay that is called atomicity 
okay so essentially the atomicity attribute or atomicity property makes sure that the transaction will be done in full or the transaction will never be done that means if you do if you start from step 1 you finish step 6 or if you cannot finish for whatever reason then get it back you know don't do anything that means in this case i have done this one two three steps what i'm going to do i'm going to add 1000 because you know i have subtracted 1000 so then i'm going to reverse i'm going to add 5000 and write that 5000 to back okay and then that property is called atomicity and then transaction has that that property okay number three number three property is like say for example you you have done all this six uh, or you know whatever the six steps that that we have explained here so you have done all these six steps after you completed all the six steps then you are telling back to the peop to the person who has given you this task so you are saying that my task is complete so when you say that your task is complete then this is how it should be it should be looking like so when you say that my task is complete so it was like you know it, this started at 5000 and this is what initial amount is 5000 here and initial amount is 4000 here so when you complete this six steps this will be 4000 here and this will be 5000 here so when you say that when you say when you when you uh, you know when you go back and then tell that person who has given you the task that might this task is complete that means this value of 4000 5000 remains permanent okay that means once you say this complete that is the value you know it's 4000 here 5000 that is called durability property okay so that means after the step 6 the the amount of checking the amount of saving is permanent all right number 4 so number 4 number 4 observation is this let's say when you are doing this task that you, know, you are told to get thousand dollar from this thing this let's say this is a task one another person said to, to, to me that another task two is deduct now dollar 100 from checking to saving okay so this is a task one and this is a task two and this task one and task two can be given at the same time that means this is a transaction and this is another transaction this transaction and running now concurrently and this is called concurrent transaction but whenever these two transaction works in concurrent we just want to make sure that they do not overlap the other guys work say for example if the task one is now on the step number three when the tax tax number one is now in the step number three he has written the new amount here in the checking account and let's say at that time and but, but remember this task one is not finished yet okay then tax two started in a tax two when he starts so it is going to go on and read the amount in this checking account but whatever amount he is going to read in the checking account that should not be the amount what happened under step three he should see the, the the person who is doing the task two he should see what was the amount at the start of the game so at, at the start of the first transaction whatever the amount that amount is going to say he is not going to see any intermediary result that means the transaction will happen in isolation okay so these are the four fundamental properties of a transaction which is called acid properties atomicity consistency isolation and durability and oracle is going to oracle is implemented or any database in, in fact is implemented to 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 respect this acid properties or to basically they all implement whenever they say that we are going to have transaction the transaction by default will observe all these four properties that we have explained you at this time 
So, so now you understand what is a transaction and also you understand what is a concurrent transaction. Then how Oracle is going to manage these transactions? These transactions are managed by SQL statement called transaction control language. And what is a transaction control language? They are commit, rollback, set point. So let's say you start your transaction at this point. You don't have to give any begin trans or any trans. Anytime when you, when you start as SQL statement, so that's how the beginning of your transaction until you do a commit or you do a rollback. Okay, so until you until you see this thing, that's a, that is the end of a logical transaction. Also, whenever you are writing a DDL like create table, okay, so that time also it is going to do it is it's going to end the transaction. All right. So now, if if this is a timeline, so basically this is a, you know like you know your task that whatever I've given you in this thing six steps, right? So this is a step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six, and then we give a commit to complete the transaction. If for whatever reason in step three we say that okay we cannot do any more step four, step five, step six, then we give here a statement called rollback. If you give a rollback, it's going to going to redo whatever things are done, step one, step two, step three, it will nullify it and then we'll go back what whatever was the database state at the time of starting. Okay. So using this commit rollback and then save point is something like you know you can in in a rollback you roll back to the last commit point. But by putting a save point we mark that this is a save point that we're going to go into roll back. So instead of rolling back completely, we can roll back partially by using save point statements. Okay, so this is all about transactions, and in the next set of videos, we are going to, in detail, uh, understand what is this atomicity properties, and then how Oracle is going to implement those things.